High-speed rail has been promised in Australia for decades, with grand plans to create a high-speed link between Brisbane, Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne, dating back to as early as the 1970s. As countries like Japan, China, France, Spain and Germany continue to grow their high-speed rail networks, high-speed rail in Australia has failed to be built. I made a video about high-speed rail in Australia a year ago, oh my god, why was I so close to the camera? Yeah, this is much better. If you haven't already, do watch that video first. But to summarise, about a year ago, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese promised $500 million for preliminary investigations into high-speed rail on Australia's east coast. I did ask one telling question at the start of that video. Is this, is this project, project actually, actually going, going to prove beneficial to the residents of New South Wales, Wales? Or, is or is it little more than an empty election promise? promise? One year on, and I fear we know the answer to that question. Before I continue, massive shout out to my monthly Kofi supporters. Please do consider supporting me over on Kofi if you can. Every single bit counts. Little progress has been made on high-speed rail. Okay, Albo's bill to establish a high-speed rail authority was passed in November 2022, and it certainly was a promising development. And hey, in the background, the New South Wales government have been conducting their own independent feasibility studies into building high-speed rail, with their former leader Gladys Berejiklian saying years earlier that she was not going to wait for the other states and the federal government. But in December 2022, the Liberal New South Wales government quietly dropped any plans to build its own high-speed rail, deciding to wait for the other states and federal government. Boy, Gladys must feel pretty stupid right now. And nothing has come of Albo's high-speed rail authority yet. They haven't even finished choosing its members. <laughs> so yeah, little progress indeed. Right now, Australia's east coast is stuck with a very slow railway. By train, it takes 11 hours to get from Sydney to Melbourne and 14 hours from Sydney to Brisbane. Compare this to the short one and a half hours to fly from Sydney to both Brisbane and Melbourne. Because of the lack of any other fast options, driving from Sydney takes about nine hours to both Brisbane and Melbourne. It's no wonder the Sydney to Melbourne air route was the fifth busiest in the world in 2023. In its current form, rail can never compete with air or car travel. Unfortunately, the Australian high-speed rail story has for decades been defined by cancelled proposals, excuse after excuse, and broken promises. Experts estimate that zero kilometres of high-speed rail has been built in Australia, and yet its wiki page is somehow 7,000 words long. Ultimately, the cost of high-speed rail has always been the biggest obstacle, estimated to be higher than $100 billion. The project will take decades to build, with positive return not expected for close to 50 years. And most notably, even though the regions are increasing in population, many argue it still remains too low to justify high-speed links to them. But one organisation has come up with a solution to all of this. Enter Fast Track Australia. I recently sat down for an interview with them, and here's what they had to say. Fast Track Australia is a, is a non-profit organisation, if you like, um, which was established to promote the, the concept of high-speed rail in Australia. We have to go with something which is going to work in the Australian context. There needs to be an upgrade uh, to the rail system to make it uh, much more viable into the future, both for passengers and, and for freight. You see, for decades, the assumption has been made that a completely new high-speed railway will need to be built all at once. Well, Fast Track Australia urge us to remove this crippling assumption and have instead implored us to define high-speed rail as an upgrade to the existing rail network. The whole line can't be built in one go. It's simply too expensive to build it all in one go. We need to realise we, we can only build perhaps uh, you know, 20 to 50 kilometres a year rather than, you know, a, a thousand kilometres in a year. High-speed rail will be built not on an entirely new corridor all at once, but instead progressively, with crossovers back to the existing track. Sections of new high-speed rail track can be progressively opened and mixed in with old existing track. As a result, 
They propose that high-speed trains can run at up to 250 kilometers on new track and simply slow down when they arrive at old track, where high-speed rail is still being progressively built, which will allow its benefits to be realized far sooner, perhaps even as soon as just 10 years from now. We need to build on what we have through a series of upgraded stages where we speed up the trains on particular sections of track, particularly where there are very windy, circuitous routes at the moment. And so we've worked out a precise way of how to actually achieve that. Let's follow the alignment that's been proposed by Fast Track. Starting at the proposed metro station at Sydney Olympic Park, they propose a tunnel down to East Hills before following the existing railway to Campbelltown. From here, Fast Track proposes the construction of the Wentworth deviation between MacArthur and Mittagong which will straighten out what is currently a tortuous and circuitous railway alignment. This logic is applied on the next alignment to Goulburn and to Yass. Now, a completely new alignment is proposed to Canberra via Gundaroo, therefore completely bypassing what is a very slow route through Malonglo Gorge. Again, after Yass, the line follows a straighter alignment to Wagga Wagga and then to Albury instead of winding its way randomly to Juni. Crossing into Victoria, the line will again deviate massively from the existing line to instead go out to the large rural town of Shepparton. Heading south, it will join back up with the existing alignment at Seymour, following this alignment all the way into Melbourne CBD, with a future station at Campbellfield as part of Melbourne's suburban rail loop. They've divided their proposal into five stages, starting with the most logical sections such as the Wentworth deviation and ending with the most challenging sections such as the Sydney and Melbourne CBD entries. Indeed, they've deliberately focused their earlier stages around upgrading the Sydney to Canberra alignment, cutting travel from four to just two hours, dubbing it a no regrets project, as it does not rely on the rest of the project to realize its benefits. If this stage does not succeed at attracting passengers onto Sydney to Canberra trains, at least the tortuous railway alignment around Picton will have finally been bypassed. But if it does succeed, and I reckon it will, it will prove the viability of high-speed rail in Australia once and for all. Now, if and when all five stages are complete, trains could be able to travel at 320 kilometers an hour. Well, the current travel time in Sydney to Melbourne is about 11 hours. We want to get that down ultimately to about four hours, but that will happen over a series of five stages. Um, for Canberra to Sydney, for, to Canberra is currently over four hours. We want to get that down to an hour and a half uh, over, over a three stage project. Um, so therefore, we're looking at very substantial improvements in travel times. This will finally allow it to compete easily with road travel, taking less than half the time of a car. More importantly, it can compete with air travel, which costs more and doesn't really take an hour and a half, due to check-ins, security checks, and the increased susceptibility of planes to delays. Put it this way, boarding a train is much faster than boarding a plane. More importantly, the fast track plan also accommodates for fast freight trains to run at night when passenger services aren't running, cutting freight times from Sydney to Melbourne from 13 hours to just eight hours. Currently, we have thousands of uh, semi-trailers and B-doubles uh, driving up and down the Hume Highway every day. We believe with a high, with appropriately designed high-speed rail system, we can put some of that freight onto the high-speed rail and move it uh, in, at times that are going to be competitive and in fact faster than moving in, on, the, on the highways. What sets apart the fast track proposal is their proposal that stations on the existing line will remain, which will allow high-speed trains to still service these stations. When the high-speed rail is fully completed, uh, trains by, that are uh, passing a city and not stopping at it can, can bypass outside the city uh, but those that are stopping can uh, slow down and, and stop in the city. Uh, but it also gives flexibility as to what trains run on the high speed rail versus what trains run on the uh, existing conventional rail. In a nutshell, it's all about promoting regional growth. 
We need to stop promoting growth on the peripheries of our existing yet increasingly unaffordable mega cities. Fast Track emphasizes that new and upgraded high speed rail stations will drive urban renewal and economic activity and attract more people to live in regional cities. So trying to spread that population growth into regional areas has great benefits for the people uh, from a livability point of view, but also there's uh, evidence that the economy will improve, so therefore spreading our population much more regionally will in fact uh, uh, be an economic boon for, uh, for, for Australia. The viability of high-speed rail has been proven time and again in so many countries internationally, not just the ones that you already know but even unexpected ones like Morocco, Serbia, and Uzbekistan. Yes, Uzbekistan. Seriously, if you can point to Uzbekistan on a map, I'll give you a free flight ticket there. My point is that high-speed rail isn't some fancy schmancy, high-tech, expensive, flashy technology. It's becoming increasingly normalized around the world. Yet media outlets, including the ABC, love to denounce high-speed rail with one message cropping up over and over and over again. High-speed rail may be great in other countries, but it just doesn't make sense in Australia. It's true, it's very iconic. It's true that it's a, a glamorous project, but it simply doesn't seem to respond to the needs of Australia at this time. But Australia's population is relatively small compared to countries that have invested in high-speed rail. The comments being made, obviously, that Australia's population is too, too, too sparse and our cities are too far apart, but that's simply not true. Most of Australia's population is and always has been located in the southeast corner, uh, more or less between Brisbane and, and Melbourne. When you, look, when you look at that much smaller land area compared with the total area of Australia, you find uh, that actually Australia's population density is much higher than people actually think. It costs every taxpayer in the country $10,000 or more to build high-speed rail, which would mostly benefit business travellers going between Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. She said that high-speed rail is ruinously expensive, but the problem there is it's being considered as a transportation project. When, when you think of it as a regional development project, and there's plenty of evidence overseas now, that the regional cities on high-speed rail grow much more faster. The economic benefits of, of high-speed rail are real and measurable. At the end of my video last year, I said this. Even if development of a proposal doesn't start tomorrow, it will start. It's inevitable. But as time goes on, as proposals come and go, as government bodies are formed and forgotten, High-speed rail feels increasingly less and less inevitable. The Australian comedy satire series Utopia did a brilliant bit on high-speed rail, where various government employees of the fictional nation-building authority try to investigate building a high-speed rail, only to quickly discover it's just too hard to build. Right, and how would you rank our chances of success? Oh, that's quite high. Oh, out of 100. Of course, the government liaison for the department asked them to hide these findings until after the election. A very fast train simply won't work. Can we just move this thing forward? <laughs> if you open your mouth, I Until might. the election. Oh, sorry. So, all pretty realistic, really. It remains to be seen whether Utopia's portrayal proves prophecy or fiction. High-speed rail would transform Australia's east coast forever and Fast Track have outlined a very sensible way to allow for this. Ultimately, cost is the biggest obstacle to overcome now, but it's pretty clear to most that we can't keep growing our burgeoning, unaffordable cities forever. What happens next, no one can predict. Thank you for watching.